Everybody loves looking at fluorescent mice or other I mean, fluorescent uh, fish, you know. It's, a, it's, it's science is exciting. I'm Jeff Rana. I'm a senior investigator at the Samuel Lunenfeld Research Institute in Toronto at Mount Sinai Hospital. I got interested in understanding how cells communicate with each other, how all the different cells in our body use a language of communication. People would say I'm an, I'm an experimentalist and I like to do experiments. I like to make the observations of experiments and puzzle about, you know, why didn't this turn out? How come I didn't get that result? How do we got this weird result? Looking always for that kind of odd result that can stimulate a new discovery. Now that I'm more of a senior investigator, I don't get to actually do experiments. And so I think I take that physical side of, of science and take it out in the kitchen where I can start to do experiments there. Some unsuccessful and some very successful. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to finish university doing. Uh, and I took a third year biochemistry lab course and I met a, um, a tutor there whose name was Elizabeth Harfinis. And she invited me to spend a summer in her lab and it was like the first day that I was in her lab and I said, that's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> I just knew it right then and there. And so from that point on, I was, I was hooked. When I was a postdoc, we were trying to understand um, how these two proteins would work together to translate the language into the cell. And it was a challenge because the other models that were existing in, in, in research at that time uh, were looking at proteins that function you know, alone. They would, they would associate with each other. Uh, they would interact with each other, uh, but they were really the same proteins. And so the challenge for us was understanding how these two different proteins were coming together uh, to translate uh, this signal in the cell. And so we had to design, um, at the time, a novel approach that was the, the moment where, you know, we designed this experiment. Um, sounded good on paper, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but when you see it actually work in, in, a, in a cell and, 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 and give you a clean result, it was, uh, it was pretty spectacular. We're really at a stage now where we're sort of describing the complexity of cancer. This complexity is kind of like a garbled language in a way. If we have an orchestral piece of music where there's many, many uh, instruments in the orchestra and they're all playing at the right time and the right place and the right magnitude, then we can get a beautiful piece of music. And the question we were asking is, is in a poor outcome cancer, is the organization of that orchestra disrupted? You know, are the cellos playing at the wrong time? Are the violins not playing loud enough? That kind of stuff. is garbled, it's, it's disrupted, it's changed. And, and for, for me, I think this is a critical thing to understand for cancer. This is what makes cancer very, very difficult for many cancers to treat because the cancer is adaptable and it can change. It's probably one of the most exciting times of my career. The flash of insight that leads to a new idea is a very exciting moment, but then the, the effort to prove it, it uh, can be very, very challenging. You have to be perseverant, you have to have flashes of insight, uh, and you have to work hard. So you have to do a lot of things <laughs> in science. So passion's critical.